At least he got out of there. You know, he wasn't acting like the movies. Oh, let me see what's exactly making the vibe. He got out of there and he came back with a strap on the, on, on his side. He's a smart guy. He's a smart guy. Hey. Do, 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 do. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. This video will make you hate caves. Me personally, I've never been in a cave before. Have I? I may have been in a cave. Like maybe at um. Well, like I I I, I don't think Disney counts. Like Disney Universal caves, those don't count. I don't think I'll go inside a cave. Um, like out in the wild, I don't have no, I don't have any business going out to the cave. So. This probably wouldn't be my scenario <clears throat> unless I had to go save somebody, depending on the situation. Like if I told you not to go to the cave and you say, well, I just want to go and you get got. I told you, <laughs> I told you not to go and you get got. I might have to leave you. And based on what I hear, if I hear like a weird, you know, a, a weird noise or a roar or something and you scream for help. Look, I didn't. I gave you. I said, don't go to the cave. You want anyway? You got got. I might have to leave the spot. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So don't go to no caves with me because you you might get left. But me personally, I'm not going to a cave out in the wild. I don't think that's a good idea. Why? Why would? I, what's in the cave that I need to go check out? <laughs> what's in the cave that I need to go check out? The discovery made by the YouTuber Connor Kelly in the McCoy Mine in Lander County, Nevada. The McCoy Mine is a silver and gold mine at the elevation of 5,400 feet. Connor arrives in a group of four via motorbikes, and upon entry of the cave, everything seems normal at first. But as they get deeper into the cave, Connor notices something reflecting the light of his flashlight. As they get closer, oh, they realize what it is. What it? Oh. Oh, Jesus, what the fuck? See? See? They're like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, hey. <clears throat> These people here, they're like, what the? What the F? Like, what is that? I don't blame them. But this is one, this is like the main reason why. I wouldn't go to a cave. Like, what is in there? I don't know. I'm not going to go find out and get got. I'm just not going to. There's some weird stuff on this earth. You know, I don't know if Bigfoot is real, but that's beside the point. I'm saying there's stuff that, that are strange creatures that aren't, like, out in the open. You know what I mean? So, if you go to a cave, you might find one of them. I'm not trying to find out. That's all I'm saying. I heard the, you know... I've been to a farm and I heard a donkey do whatever noise they do, you know, laugh or whatever you call it. I don't know what you call it, but I've seen a donkey, I heard a donkey do their noise at night. And that's just, that's the most, that's the scariest noise I've ever heard from a, from an animal on earth. Imagine whatever that is, what kind of noise it makes, you know, and it's not even domestic. It's a shoe. Oh, look, it's not like a it's a pile of shoes, but to make it even more disturbing, it's a pile of children. It's a pile of shoes. Man, what kind of anti-climatic shoes? Mixed in with the shoes are various bones laying in the pile. What the? Connor then looks further down the cave, and you can see skeletal remains of some type hey. of animal, possibly a coyote or deer. The shoes all appear to be older, with 80s styling on a lot of them. And obviously, whoever or whatever put them there deliberately made a pile out of them. Oh, shoot. Is it down there? It is in caves now. Oh, my goodness. It is in caves, bro. This is crazy. Connor said they contacted police on the matter, but they didn't seem to take it seriously or care. The bones could easily be explained away as the cave being some kind of animal feeding grounds, but the pile of shoes isn't as easily explainable. There's always the question of if this was a prank to scare people, but this honestly seems like it would take a lot of effort for a prank or failed viral video attempt. 
A more disturbing explanation would be that this is or was a dump for abducted kids, where their shoes would be removed for whatever reason and dumped there, possibly as trophies. An example that could be compared to this was in the early 1900s in Wald Lake, Michigan. There was believed to be a sick and cruel man who began murdering kids in the area, and after he would dispose of the bodies, he threw their tiny shoes up into the branches of a tree. Eventually, the man was caught and people found his tree ornamented with dangling shoes of dead children, almost as if it were one big trophy to him. Whether this is something similar to that, or just a weird prank that somebody spent way too much time on will probably remain a mystery. But one thing's for certain, there aren't many possible explanations for this. If you're claustrophobic, this story will make you uneasy. This is the tragic tale of jo I am very claustrophobic. I don't like tight spaces, especially when it's dark. I am claustrophobic, man. Claustrophobic, being like small tight spaces, I, I get like, you know, like when you get the chills or like the shivers, like you just want to shake. That's what that's what I get thinking about it. Like when I think about being in a tight space or cave, I'm like, I'm, I'm like dying. That's how I feel. But <clears throat> let's continue. John Edward Jones, who was a 26-year-old medical student and family man. When he was younger, he explored many caves with his father and his brother, so he'd been exploring caves practically his entire life. But one cave proved to be too dangerous even for John, the Nutty Putty Cave. This cave was known for its notoriously narrow spaces. They were first explored by Dale Green in 1960. The cave is located southwest of Utah Lake and 55 miles from Salt Lake City. John entered Nutty Putty Cave at around 8 p.m. on the evening of November 24, 2009, a few days before Thanksgiving. John, his 23-year-old brother Josh, and several other friends and family members all decided to explore Nutty Putty Cave as a way to spend time with each other ahead of the holiday. John was married, had a one-year-old daughter, and was attending medical school in Virginia. He had come back home to Utah to spend some time with his family for the holiday, making the story all the more tragic. About an hour into their expedition into the Nutty Putty Cave, John decided to crawl through a tight passage that he mistakenly thought was known as the Birth Canal. Unfortunately, this passage was way tighter. He inched his way into the narrow passage head first. Like, like, look at this, bro. This looks wild. He dived into it head first? Goodness gracious. I don't know about you guys, but this is disturbing to me. And forward using his hips, stomach, and fingers. But within minutes, he realized he'd made a terrible mistake. He knew that he was more or less stuck and had no room to turn around or even wriggle back out the way he came. He had no choice but to try to press forward. Lord. He tried to exhale the air in his chest so that he could fit through a space that was barely 10 inches across and 8 inches high. Bro, but when John inhaled again and his chest puffed back out, he got stuck for good. Josh found his brother, and in a tragic turn of events, as he was pulling at John's calves, John slid further down the shaft. Dang. What's worse is that now he was stuck upside down with one hand beneath him and the other wedged above. At this point, the two boys started to pray. Eventually, Josh made it back to the surface to call for help. But even once help came, John was still trapped 400 feet into the cave and 100 feet below the Earth's surface. Lord. Getting the people, equipment, and supplies down that far took over an hour. Due to John being stuck upside down, time was of the essence. In an upside down position, a healthy young person could live for a few hours, but probably not much more. The body is adapted to work with gravity, not against it. Blood flows the way it does with gravity's help. Our organs sit where they are because of how we stand, so John's blood pressure was falling dangerously low, and his organs would start to crush each other if he didn't get out soon. This position would also require the heart to work incredibly hard to continuously pump excess blood out of the brain. The first rescuer to reach John was a woman named Susie Modola, who arrived at about 12.30 a.m. on November 25th. At that point, John had been trapped for three and a half hours. Susie introduced herself to John, even though all she could see of him was a pair of navy and black running shoes. John said back to her, Hi Susie, thanks for coming, but I really, really want to get out. Over the next 24 hours, more than 100 rescue personnel worked to free John from the depths of the Nutty Putty. The best plan they had was to try to use a system of pulleys and ropes to try to free John from his position. Rescuers tied John with a rope connected to a series of pulleys, causing him to scream in pain due to a lack of blood in his lower body. Everything was ready, and they pulled as hard as they could. 
but suddenly and without warning, one of the pulleys failed. Rescuers believe the pulley came loose at its anchor point in the cave wall. The rope and pulley operation failed, and the rescuers had no other viable plans. John was trapped. With no hope of rescue and his heart having suffered hours upon hours of strain due to his downward position, John was pronounced dead of cardiac arrest shortly after midnight on the evening of November 25th. A week after John's death, the Nutty Putty Cave was sealed off for good. Perhaps the scariest part is that they never recovered his body, and his remains will stay down there forever. Bro, like, why even... That's what I'm saying, bro. Why you want to go through tight spaces? What's fun about that? What is fun about going through tight spaces, man? This is just crazy to me. Does that even make... Like, what's... Could somebody tell me what's fascinating about going through a tight space where you might not be able to get out? What do you want to find? Just what do you want to... I don't, I don't get it. Me personally, I don't get it, bro. Risking your life to just go down there and then say you went down there? How are you even going? If you think about it, if you're going down there and, 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 and it's tight, how are you going to get out of it? Man, people are crazy out here. They don't think, bro. Let's continue. I don't understand. This one, while being kind of creepy, is also pretty interesting. A YouTuber by the name of Water Skipper posted a video exploring a cave in Oregon called the Maller Cave. On the surface, it looks like a pretty normal cave. Until the bleachers on either side come into view. Now, anyone would wonder what exactly bleachers would be doing in a cave. One might assume some kind of secret underground rituals could be going on in there. Probably. And in a place as creepy as deep in a cave, these would probably be some sick rituals. Yep. However, the cave is owned by the Masonic Lodge of Burns. For decades, the Freemason group in Oregon held their meetings in this cave, cleaning and maintaining the area. But obviously a group holding private meetings in a creepy cave is going to create bad rumors and conspiracy theories regarding both the Masons and the cave itself. One of those theories claiming that the cave hosted satanic rituals and devil worship. While that's likely untrue, it's still, as a whole, a creepy place. The cave has been closed off since 2019, when local masons put up a gate at the cave entrance in order to stop the vandalism and graffiti that was plaguing the site. Kenny Veach is someone I've talked about before, but his story is perhaps one of the more chilling stories having to do with caves. Kenny was a YouTuber and caver who disappeared in 2014 after attempting to explore a cave he nicknamed the M Cave, which he reported hearing unusual noises from and found it suspicious as it was located six miles south of a top secret airbase. As he began to enter the cave, he claimed his whole body began to vibrate. The more he went into the cave, the worse the vibrating became. Why are you going deeper, bro? Why are you going deeper inside the cave? Your body begins to vibrate when you went in the, into the cave. It's something in there, bro. Something in there that you do not want to experience, bro. He said he suddenly became very afraid and hightailed it out of there. He uploaded this video to talk about his experience with the cave. Um, I got to still go over another ridge and then go all the way down uh, a big crevice. It's real narrow and gets kind of scary. Uh, and uh, I'm looking for a cave that I, I found and I didn't have a... I didn't have a sidearm when I was here before, and something about that cave just spooked me out of all the caves I've ever gone in. This one just made my body vibrate. The closer I got to it, the crazier my body felt. <laughs> hey, listen. Listen, man. At least he got out of there. You know, he wasn't acting like the movies. Oh, let me see what's exactly making the vibe. He got out of there, and he came back with a strap on, on, on his side. He's a smart guy. He's a smart guy. Hey. Do, 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 do. He's a smart guy, man. But going back there, I don't think you should go back there. So so he might be messing up, actually. Hey, man. Why you going back there? And I was like, all right, I'm not going to go in there right now. But I'm coming back someday. And I talked to some people on YouTube. And I told them, hey, I'm coming out here. You know, because they, they kind of called my hand on it. So... I don't know if there's going to be anything to Hey, so? Call your hand on all day. I ain't going back there. <laughs> Bro, 
But I could cut my hand all day. I am not going back there, bro. First of all, I'm not even going there at all. So that's not even. But if I was in in his situation, and I and I experienced what he experienced, oh no, we're not going back. We are not going back. That is wild. Uh, if I can find it, I got to relocate it. And this is a big mountain range I'm in. Of course, the internet being what it is, people made fun of him and accused him of making the whole thing up or at least fabricating the story. Basically, Kenny was pressured into going back to the cave a second time, even though he was afraid to enter it the first time. Kenny gave in to the pressure and returned to the cave, and he has not been seen since. Bro, oh my goodness! Bro, bro come on, what? Kenny? Doggone it, Kenny. At least go with- Man, Kenny done messed up. You could have at least went with some extra people. You went by yourself, bro? Dang it. Man, Kenny, man. I thought you was a smart guy. Right? You may, I bust out the song for you. You know, hit a couple notes. And you over here went back and now you're locked. Kenny disappointed me, man. Doggone it. Kenny was not living healthy. Kenny was not living healthy out here. His phone was found in an abandoned mine entrance. Dang. But nobody was ever found. Wow. Kenny was an extremely nice and likable guy, making his disappearance and likely death all the more tragic. People believe that given the close proximity to the airbase, Kenny was actually murdered by the government. Proponents of this theory believe that the M-Cave Kenny discovered was an entrance to some kind of top-secret government facility due to its close proximity to Nellis Air Force Base and Area 51. They believe that the vibrating sensation Kenny felt while near the cave was a defense mechanism to keep civilians from entering. Under the same theory, Kenny saw government secrets within the cave and was kidnapped by U.S. soldiers when he emerged. A YouTuber by the name of Abandoned Minds 11 posted a video of what he believes to be the M Cave that Kenny described, and it's pretty credible. The cave appears to have been walled off and sealed, preventing access inside. Okay, I made it up here to the entrance of this M Cave. There's the one side of it, it comes down and then goes back up there and down. Now, this doesn't look to be very deep at all, and it looks like they were trying to wall it off. There's stacked rocks right there, as well as behind me here, like right there. The YouTuber finds multiple items on the floor, like planks of wood and a beer bottle with no label, possibly a bottle Kenny was carrying. Most interestingly, he finds an Area 51 warning sign, which actually may back up the theories that this was some kind of entrance to an underground facility owned by the government. But this is all speculation, and what actually happened to Kenny is still unknown. Hey, Kenny. <clears throat> Kenny, man. <clears throat> Kenny got... Uh, we don't know what happened to Kenny. But Kenny is somewhere... Yo, I don't know if he's being used for an experiment, or if he's gone. He's probably, you know, he's most, like, he's most likely gone. If that's, if that's really the case... If that's really the case, right, and he um, got kidnapped or whatever, hey, you know, what are we going into caves for? Like, I don't, I, I, tell me what's, what is one thing good you can find in a cave? Just, if somebody can answer me that question, one thing you can find that's, that's good in a cave or so valuable, let me know in the chat. Maybe it might make more sense, <clears throat> you know. It it might make more sense. I don't know if it's gonna be, you know, like oh, I know why you should go to the caves now, but it might make a little bit more sense. But I don't I don't know what you can find in a cave that'll be like worth going there for. If you tell me there's gold, you know, worth like two million, two two m's, two b's. Oh yeah, let's go to the cave. Let's go check it out. I'm I'm down for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if we go into the cave for, for just to see if there's anything in there, like monsters, I ain't participating. You're not going to get me.